Good morning, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Barham Engines. Right, guys, so it's Monday morning. Got a few changes here. So Paul came over. So that's Paul with the Mark III Focus RS. He came over on Friday to collect the bottom end and the cylinder head we've gone through for the Focus. Now, Paul is the one who's good friends with Pete. So Peter and Paul. Um, Pete is the one we've got the normally aspirated uh, Cosworth that we are doing. So Paul came and dropped a few bits off for that and a little telltale of one thing he's bought sticking out the bottom of that cover. I'll show you that in a second. So we've got some bits there that he's bought for the normally aspirated um, rocker cover. Now this is a little beauty. Look at that. That's what a few hundred quid looks like there. Um, now the reason he's bought this cover is because this engine is going in a Mark I Escort. It's going to be a beautiful car. Um, it's, an, it's got original bubble arches on it. Um, absolutely fantastic car. So obviously we have got the Gen V throttle bodies on this. Um, it's going to be a lovely build. Still hydraulic setup on the cams. Trick cams mine, but it's the hydraulic setup. So it's going to be used predominantly for road use. Um, and this is a proper period Cosworth cover that's going to look wonderful in a Mark 1 Escort. So yeah, absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to get that on. Another thing that Paul has bought over is this little beauty. Uh, we haven't got it on correctly yet. I've just literally plonked it on there. And so this is made by Simpson Race Exhausts. Um, and it's a, and it's a, as you can see, it's a, a four branch tubular manifold absolutely beautiful in stainless so we've got a little bit of jiggery pokery to to get it on there um, but i just thought i'd plonk it on there so it's out of the way and not being kicked around the floor but look at that that is gorgeous and that is made specifically to go in the mark one so obviously in the mark one escort you haven't got a great deal of room but that is going to look beautiful hanging over the side and you just imagine with that rocker cover on the side and then on the other side if i just reveal these here We've just plonked them on, but we've got the Gen V throttle bodies there. So looking fantastic already. This thing here, we have just, I think we're just waiting for John to polish the crank over there. Then we're going to get that balanced as soon as we face the flywheel and got the clutch. Clutch is being specially made now. Um, so yeah, we we're just waiting for the pistons. We've got the pistons from Burton there, Acrylite, and they're a lovely item. Um, I'll open those up in a bit. Actually, I'll open them now. We've got the race bearings in there, um, ARP bolts, plenty of bits in there. So if I just open these, you can see these, look, they've got the nice bowl on the top. Very, very nice item, look lovely. So yeah, these are gonna end up with that cylinder head about 12 to one, something like that, but these are just gonna be too low. You can see they're a flat top. So I will make use of these, even if I have to use them for a turbo in the future, there's, there's about 10 mil of, um, crown thickness, more than that, I think, about 12 mil. So I can put a bowl in there and use them for turbo applications. They're, they're brand new pistons, um, but didn't have, Dave didn't have the rings, so I bought a brand new set of Hepolite rings to go with them. Um, so yeah, we've got these pistons now, so we can, as soon as we've got the crank sorted, we've got all the bits to get this thing dummy built. Um, so I would have thought, all being well, we're gonna be well on the way with this motor sort of end of next week-ish. Right guys, I just wanna thank you all for your information and your comments down below on the, uh, from the last video about the Volvo. So that's this Volvo here. If you didn't watch the last video, head over there and you'll know what I'm on about. You see you've got a big puddle of oil down there. The reason for that is because that sump in the workshop is off this car. Um, now I got underneath, just a brief recap, I got underneath this car last week with the sump off um, because this thing is hosing in water into the sump like you wouldn't believe. Um, I couldn't see anything. We put a dye in the water um, and I've got under there with a UV light and obviously there is, there is water in the oil so it's sort of splashed about but there's no alarming um, signs of any cracks or anything like that in the block because we did fit liners to this block. Um, fitted loads of them before so never had a problem before but Basically, um, Paul has been in today. He's the guy that owns the car. I know I keep mentioning a lot of Pauls lately. We've got a lot of Pauls. He's been in today and I said, I, look, I've been underneath. He's more than welcome to clamber underneath there and have a little look, but I can't see anything that's too alarming. And bear in mind, you're talking 
probably a litre a mile it's putting in water into the sump. Um, so many of you guys, and as I say, thank you very much, have commented saying that the oil cooler is a big problem on these. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the oil cooler off. Um, we're going to heat it up and pressurise it and see whether water leaks out of the oil way on it. Basically, we're going to test that. We're also going to pressure test the water system where it is at the moment with the sump off, get underneath, see if we can see any leaks. That was another um, suggestion from you guys down in the comments. So yeah, that's the next stage of it. Paul's got a bit of a cold at the moment, but when he's better, he's gonna come in and we'll start those processes. So we'll keep you informed on that. But thanks ever so much guys for your information. Moving on, talking of Paul and his Mark III Focus RS, we've got another Mark III Focus RS here. So this is the one that came in about a week or week and a half ago. Um, this is a friend of Kyle. Now Kyle is the one we just finished the Cosworth 4 that went off on the pallet last week, Friday. Um, and I said to Kyle, we'll get this one stripped. Now the history of this, as far as I can make out, is Kyle and his friends have got Focus Mark 3 RSs as well as Escort Cosworths. Um, good on them. They went over to Nürburgring, three of them, did a run round there, ended up overheating I think. Um, blew a head gasket or it was head gasket symptoms he thought now they didn't really know the the history of this when he bought it in Kyle said he thinks it was a Ford exchange motor or something like that um, so they were they didn't really know what it had in it as far as I was aware and it's got head gasket symptoms so it's it's lost its water pressurized etc brought it into us. Now they're in a bit of a rush for this. So Kyle wants to do a show next month in his Escort Cosworth and his mate wants to go in his car. So I said to him, I'll crack right on with this. So I've got Paul to strip it last week. What have we found? First of all, the standard Mark III Focus RS, which is a 2.3, um, has got an open deck block. So if you remember when I did Paul's, it come, he bought that brace, which I pressed into the top refaced it and that secures the open deck. Well, this hasn't got it, as you can see. So that is a two litre block, okay? A two litre EcoBoost block. Same bore size, same dimensions on all the rest of it, um, just closed deck. So this is what they use to go a bit stronger with. So that's a good thing. Um, so we've got the two litre block, same bore size, as I say. It's got the ARP main stud and nuts, etc. So um, that's all good. I'm going to measure the housings. Now the crank is absolutely perfect. See the crank here, look, absolutely perfect. John's measured it, cock on, standard. Um, now someone has chucked in some decent I-beam rods. Um, I've never used these before, Boost Line. Don't know whether any of you heard of them. Um, but they're an I-beam rod, which is, I-beam is what you want in these because they weigh about 100 grams less than the H-beam, believe it or not. Now it's got CP pistons. These are the ones that I put in Paul's car. Now, a bit of a schoolboy error with this, whoever's built this. Um, they've got the standard bore, which is 87 and a half, is it? I think, yeah, 87 and a half. Um, they bought the pistons, so they spent decent money here buying this. I mean, them pistons are about 650 quid, but they bought them in standard. Rather than bore it and do the correct running clearance, this thing here, whether it's the, the, war, the wear in it has happened since they put them pistons in, but there's about three thou extra wear in there, plus about a thou, these pistons are meant to really run about a thou less than what they would be originally. So there's no point putting standard size pistons them in a standard bore. Now, what the combination of wear and the clearances on them He's ending up running about 8,000 of running clearance with that. So they're going to be slapping about like a prick in a bucket. And in a minute, it's going to cause some sort of issue. So I've said to Carl, we're not going to be able to use them. Um, we've got to bore it and we've got to go to 88 mil with another set of CPs, which we're doing. The rods are good to use. Um, the bearings are all wearing okay, especially on the mains. The only thing is on the big ends, they're a bit slack in there. So I suspect... They need to check the map, something's happening, um, but it's starting to pound out these big ends. So we're gonna measure everything, make sure that these rod housings are good and all the rest of it, um, and stick some new pistons in. The rings are razor sharp, and we took the second ring off and stuck it in the ball. We've got about a millimeter of 
um, end gap, which means these rings have been wearing quite bad. So it's, I'd say maybe over fueling. Um, camshafts all look good. Got to check, make sure that they're standard or whatever they are, see what they are, but they're all good. So what we're going to do with this one, we're going to go for the competition crank bearings. We're going to go for a new genuine oil pump. Um, clutch is all good. We're going to balance the crank assembly. Obviously size, balance the rods, new pistons. We'll be balancing them. Face and bore the block um, to first oversize and get the running clearance right. Clean all this up and get it all back together with new gaskets and a new Athena. You must run a two litre head gasket when you run the two litre block. Um, that's what it's had on before. This is the head gasket, but as you can see, this thing has got pretty hot. You can tell look, where it's going down the water jackets, it's, it's all melted. So that is a coolant heat issue. Um, and it's just blew the head gasket. You can see on the cylinder head, it's blew it all the way down this side. You see where all the black is, look, that's a terrible mess. Um, so that's blew a head gasket, good and proper. So I would certainly, because obviously he's been in the Nürburgring and it's long periods of flat out in the revs, I would say they need to be checking the map on this, make sure everything's all right. And also check the cooling system, make sure all that's good. Um, but yeah, I'd be quite interested really. What I might do is just send a sample of the oil off just to see what is in there. That will probably tell you a lot about the map. Um, obviously he needs to be getting his injectors checked and make sure they're flowing correctly. But I'm suspecting by the bearings, there may be some fuel in this oil. Um, so yeah, that's where we are with it, guys. Um, we're just going to, I've got all the bits on order. We're going to crack on with this one next week and hopefully turn, turn this around fairly smartish for Kyle and his mate. Seems to be the same story with these um, type of engines. Not 100% convinced on the map. Why you wouldn't bore that and spend 600 odd quid on a set of pistons, I do not know. So guys, Monday afternoon now, and I've been a busy bee today. The Cosworth here. So this is Lee Workman's, I think his name is. Um, this was the one that we were waiting for the liner um, that I put in last week, the special liner, which has gone in number two. Um, and that is all pretty much done now, on the bottom end wise anyway. We've obviously balanced the crank assembly, um, did me dummy build this morning, took off the tops of the pistons, the correct amount. So we've now got 12th hour jut out on those pistons. You see we've got the six long studs and the four normal ones on the outside. Um, I've got the crank in, torqued up, new core plugs, got my front pulleys on and the cam belt. Um, so the next step on this one, apart from waiting for a new oil pump, um, got all the pickup cleaned up. Cleaned up. I haven't got to do any painting on this because Lee brought it in looking absolutely fantastic. So to look at, you wouldn't have thought there's anything wrong with this. It looked bloody lovely, um, but not so great inside. So all I'm doing now, we've cleaned up the cylinder head and I'm just cutting the valve seats. As you can see, we've got new guides in there on all of them. Just got to um, remount the exhaust slightly and then cut those seats, skim the head, and that can be all put back together, which hopefully by the time the oil pump turns up in the morning, it will all be ready to be put back on. So as soon as I get that head done, we can plonk that on with a new head gasket. Always use a Victor Rhines multi-layer. We've got the G19 sump baffle in here. Um, that's, a, that's worth its weight in gold, that thing, um, especially on the big wing sumps there. Yeah, just goes to show on that Mark III Focus RS engine, it's another built engine, guys, that just hasn't been done properly. No excuse for sticking those pistons down a, an old bore. Um, certainly not what you do. But until Wednesday's video, guys, hope you have a great evening. Um, just an informative one today, I suppose. Um, look out for our second channel video. And if you haven't already, go over to that, subscribe and like. Um, we've just had some new bits turned up for the E30, really special bits as well. So head over to that tomorrow. Um, but until Wednesday, we'll see you on this channel then. Cheers, guys.